All right, guys, look what finally showed up for the tea bucket build. Hey, gearheads, welcome back to the channel. It's 2024. Still looks the same outside. The sky's not falling yet. But we're working on the tea bucket, episode 10, and we don't have a roller. Now, I'm serious when I say we do not have a roller here. We had taped everything up to start actually spraying, and well, we can't really move the frame out of the way here. FedEx delivered our tires, but what FedEx did not deliver is our actual wheels to put the tires on to make this thing a roller so we can push it outside. <laughs> they said they delivered them, but they never showed up. So between fighting with Amex and Jegs and, you know, FedEx, which you just can't win with them because they're going to send you a delivery picture of it being delivered at some other complete different location, our wheels will be here this week. So depending on you know, my editing skills, I'll probably get, you know, the wheels put on and we'll have a roller sometime by the time this video posts. But still do have a lot of things that we have to do here. We do have some cool stuff that we're going to be installing from GSTP Automotive. Got a fancy fuel filter kit that we're going to put on. More than likely, it's going to go in the back next to all the electrical stuff because, you know, again, gasoline and uh, electrical stuff it mixes just perfectly. Uh, we do have some stuff that we're going to do on the transmission, change out the vacuum modulator here. This one here is circa 1969. It may work, it may not, but I got another one, uh, and I didn't pay for it. And uh, I'll tell you about that, because uh, it kind of came, uh, came with the tires and wheel package. I also got some break-in Lucas uh, heavy-duty gear oil for the rear end, so we're going to find out if this leaks, or if it doesn't. I'm sure hoping it doesn't. Because uh, something did leak there, but it wasn't from that. So we got that to do. We got a few things that we need to do on the motor, fuel lines, and then we'll have a roller. I'm hoping we can start some painting in this episode. And then I also have something special for you. Went all the way to Colorado just to get it cut for the tea bucket for the body that's hiding out there in the back. So there's a funny story with this Lucas here. Um, so when I bought the tires and rims, it had like one of those $150 off coupons. And um, what I ended up doing is adding like an extra $150 worth of stuff to the actual order. And then when I entered the coupon code, I got a bunch of stuff, brake fluids, our gear oil, vacuum modulator, a bunch of other fun stuff that we're gonna put on essentially for free because of the discount. So we're gonna run this for probably the first 500 or so miles just to break it in. We'll add a little bit of General Motors LSD fluid to it as well, which will stop like the wine in the rear end um but this will work out fine for what it is i know there's a lot of stuff about lucas and a lot of guys don't like lucas but i don't really care it's just a break-in oil right so it's not going to be in there very very long um really we don't need to add too much to this biggest thing is i'm hoping it just doesn't leak and we got our fancy little transfer pump here that we'll use. It's got a little bit of transmission fluid in it, but we got most of it out there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. So they say two to three quarts. I don't think this is going to be nowhere near two to three quarts. Looks like it only takes like a quart. Oh man, this stuff smells like... Oh... Like straight hookers. Yeah. This is like the slowest pump in the world, but yet this stuff is absolutely insanely thick. But it's the right viscosity, so it better not whine, right? I hear these uh, third members are known for whining, so we'll find out. I know uh, it is a Speedway one, but it's based off the Curry style. And uh, I'm convinced that Curry makes them and then it's stamped with Speedway. But uh, they said they used to actually um, whine in the beginning, but they're ultra quiet now. So we'll find out if we ever make it to the road, though. All right, it looks like we hit our limit here. It's just a little bit coming out. So it's pretty interesting that they went with a little billet cap uh, versus maybe like... Uh, a steel bong or, or something a little bit different. Uh, the cap here, um, here, put a little closer so you can see, feels really, really cheap. Uh, it's anodized aluminum. 
And it was loose as hell when I went to go take it off. So I'm really glad it didn't fall out. Um, but we'll make sure that we don't over tighten it. Um, Cause it really does seem like one of those things, it'll 100% strip. All right, so I think we're good. And I don't think we have any leaks either. So I think we are set. So it's amazing when you look at some of this stuff, how simple um, <laughs> it was actually held together, especially on this transmission. I mean, one bolt for a, seems like a last minute design. Mm, that thing is like in there, holy crap. All right, almost looks like it's cross-threaded. I bet it hasn't been out since 1969, right there. I'll spray some of this on there. Damn, am I can empty? Whoa. I used most of it when I was drilling on the drill press. Actually, you know what? These cans just suck, is what it is. Yeah, you can't get anything out of that. There's stuff in there. All right. We'll let that set for a second. Well, we just totally broke the head off the bolt. I knew it was going to happen. So, we'll probably drill out the case right there and put our own little, little bolt in there. Just something small. Man, it's kind of socks because something more to do now. Damn. Yeah, so take a look at these two here. Yeah, you can tell that that one's actually bent. Um, I don't know why it would be bent unless it got hit. And then you got your new one there. Uh, that's wild though. Does it slide in? Yeah, it goes right in. And it, it does sit at a bit of an angle though, but not angle wise with that. I don't think this is supposed to be bent. Do you guys know? You got one laying around, let me know. I'm uh, definitely curious. It actually looks like it was pressed in. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put the old one back in here for now. And then um, we're gonna drill that out right there so we can get ourselves our little bracket put on there. Let's get some of this metal shaving out of the way here. And then we can pull this one out finally and put our new bolt in. Oh yeah, that bend on that one's concerning because it doesn't look normal because it's definitely caved in. But we can get our 100% brand new one. It's not bent. We'll slide that one in there. They say this one's an adjustable one. I don't know what really makes it adjustable. I guess you just turn it. So put that in there, and then our new bracket. Well, old bracket, new bracket. Should fit. We could have gone with a shorter bolt here, but I wanted the uh, the excess. So we are locked in tight there. Is it in? We'll just throw a little hose on here for now, because otherwise if I leave it in this box, I'll end up losing it. So I'll put that right there. Is it, it still feels a little loose though. I don't know. It's in there, it's just a flex of the actual pan. So we're good. All right, so let's try to grab some fittings here. These are from GSTP Automotive. They sent me a bunch of stuff. Um, and fittings like this are, are actually pretty expensive. Um, we're gonna use these on the fuel pump here. And we have a bit of a weird angle going on with this. There was really no right way to do this. Um, I could have turned it all the way back, but as you know, these only notch in certain positions here. And if I notched it over one more, so turning left that way, the output barb here would be facing right into the motor. Now, if we turned it right one, as you remember with the old one, it was hitting on the frame here, and then that just wasn't gonna work out. If you turn it all the way around, it would be hitting the motor mount here. Now, I know we got a bit of a, you know, larger bolt in here, because that's really what we had. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't really working out. So we're gonna put um, a 90 here with a barb up 
to feed to the carburetor. And then over here, we're gonna do probably, I'm thinking of 45 into uh, right where our fuel line meets, right in there. But we gotta get these tightened up. I pulled these from the old one. Uh, let's pull that old fuel pump though really quick. I think it was episode six where we had that problem, but you can see the size difference in these two. And if you remember, this one was banging on the frame and it actually damaged the frame there. So you can see the size difference. And, and it took Speedway shipping this one like three times. They kept shipping this, even though it was ordering that, only to find out that they don't have that one or carry it in stock anymore. So the standard size fuel pumps, if you're using a small block Chevy, it's not gonna work on a Speedway frame. You're gonna have to get something a lot smaller if you can still find uh, that style there. But yeah, these ones, oh, my line fell. These ones aren't gonna work at all. Well, let's get these torqued down here just enough. That'll fit in there. You know, I didn't realize till I put these in that it actually came with chromed out ones. And I grabbed the old black ones from the old fuel pump. All right, so that'll sit fine just like that. So instead of using two different adapters like I was going to do here, we'll just do this one right like that and then run the line up there. And we got pretty good clearance. It looks like it's close to everything, but it's actually fairly close. And we'll test it out. If it doesn't end up working out, then we'll swap out the adapters for some smaller ones. So this one I'm a bit iffy about. It does sit on the inside of the frame rail. But there's just a lot going on over here. We might actually try a smaller one. Let's see what else we got. Do like a hard 90, like that. I don't want too many fittings here. Man, this looks ugly. <laughs> People are going to be like, what the hell you got going on down here? So, yeah, I think that'll be fine. Run the line over and then up. But then again, let me grab the other one here because it might actually be the same size I just used the two. Yeah. We'll just go with the other 90. Less adapters, actually, but it's still the same size. Because if you see, if we grab these two and put these with the AN6 and the barb fitting. And then you look at these two side by side, it's pretty much the same. So we'll use this one right here. So for the fuel line, we're just gonna use this uh, hydraulic fuel line itself. It's actually nice and, and braided. Uh, same company sent this over. So I'm pretty, uh, take a peek in there, you can see it. it's actually some pretty thick stuff, but we're not gonna need too much here. I'm thinking maybe like, eh, really in theory, we only need like a foot or so, but I wanna do like a little wrap. That way we have some extra just in case. All right. I mean, this stuff is so hard to put on. So that'll look, that'll work perfect. Just like that. Not too much of a bend, but just enough that we have some excess. And I don't think it's crimped here, is it? Oh, shit, it might be. Might be just a little too much. So I shortened it up just a tad here. And now we should be good. Push that on. So there's no crimp anymore. So the nice, perfect little bend right in there. Now for the carburetor, we're not gonna cut the lines just yet. I am gonna run it and then we'll just leave it curled here for now. Because we may change some things up just a little bit later on. But what I will do, I think will be good running it up through there, is we'll go ahead and push it down. And then we'll trim from the top on this stuff. Man, and this stuff is like, 
this is some thick stuff. Once it's pushed onto the bar, it's like you're screwed. You gotta cut it off completely. And it's almost like it's five or six layers is what it feels like. There's like a plastic tube on the inside embedded around the thread, which is then covered in plastic, which then is essentially fabric wire braided. So some pretty, pretty serious stuff here. So it should be all right on any type of like fatigue or long term, all that fun stuff. We may move that clamp around down here as well. It's very close to the line, but not quite. But I think in a few hundred million miles or so, it might bust through that line there. So we'll leave that curled up here for now. All right guys, so next up on the list is a fuel filter. Nice little billet aluminum one that we're gonna get installed. Not really too sure where we're gonna put it on the T bucket yet. This was another item sent for me uh, from GSTP Automotive. So I definitely was looking for something that was a little different than just a standard, um, you know, paper style filters. And this one is, um, man, talk about a hand bomb here. This thing is massive. But I do wanna bust it open and check out what kind of filters actually on the inside. We got everything from AN3 to AN6, AN9 fittings here, but let's take a look at the actual internal filter and see what we got going on here. Let's bust this sucker open and see. I already got, uh, we're gonna do with AN6 fittings here, but let's take a peek and see. So there's your spring right on the inside there. So it's actually a uh, metal filter. That's pretty nice to actually see that versus a paper. And it looks like it's cleanable, washable, reusable. So that's good to know there. We'll put that back together. But we still need to figure out where we're actually gonna put this sucker here. We're gonna probably put it underneath the gas tank, but I do need to figure it out because this is like last minute design changes, which <laughs> are not always the best. And we got a ton of different style fittings in here as well that we're gonna try to figure out which one we're gonna use. And some crazy ones here that I've never really seen, but uh, Kind of wish I had these a little sooner. So I think I got this kind of figured out. I put the tank in the battery box on here. And well, I know this is something where it's kind of like we're trying to add to after we've already kind of figured out what we're gonna do, but I really wanna make it work. And yeah, we could go with a little paper filter or whatever, but that thing just looks cool. Just no room in here to mount this. Um, even on the rail, there just isn't too much because that's where the fuel line's gonna come out. And it's gonna connect in here. So just, there's just, ah, so tight, so tight. Uh, hindsight, probably could have done it up here, possibly, but yeah, just, I like doing stuff after everything else is done, you know? Adds to the flare. We're winging it now though. Let's fix this fuel filter issue here. We'll just make a bracket for this thing here. And hopefully we don't bust the side of this little workbench card off either in the process. All right, let's see what we got. You know, this lube, when I use it on the drill bits, smells like uh, sweat <laughs> Absolutely terrible. I did the measurements right here, and with the suspension clearance, it's gonna clear. This bracket will essentially go just like this, and then the fuel filter will hang off uh, the side. Some of it will be covered up by the way the body comes down. Um, yeah, it is a last minute change that kind of makes it you know, just a little more difficult, just the way it's set up, but. So we're gonna use a quarter 20 here because that's essentially what I have left over bolt wise. But I can't get the tap handle in here, so. I had a bit of a camera malfunction here. 
uh, file got corrupted while I was actually installing this bracket here. But I ended up getting, uh, well, I found some grade eight, not that we needed grade eight bolts here, but some of the quarter 20s. And you can see the top of the bracket for the fuel filter got mounted up top. And then for the rest of the isolation bracket here, we mounted down here and then we put a bolt through the bottom. So that'll clear everything here. And like I said earlier, I did the measurements. So the way that the suspension works, it doesn't actually have that much travel. Um, it's kind of, uh, <laughs> it looks like it does, but it doesn't, it's less than three inches. So it's a backbreaker. So it's definitely gonna clear our bracket here, but what we need to do is let's go ahead and put some of our fittings on here and slide it into the isolation dampener here and then check out what it's gonna look like afterwards. And just for the sake of not losing adapters, I lose stuff very, very easily, even if I keep it in the same box. So we're just gonna put these on for now and then we'll go ahead and slide it into the hole. We're probably not gonna keep the 180 style here or the 90, but this is kind of the route that I'm thinking about going, but I'm not really too sure. We have a box full of stuff from GSTP, so they sent me plenty and then there's a lot more. So there's definitely room for moving. Maybe we'll actually leave this one on, but I think we're all tightened up. Let's slide it in and then uh, we'll check it out. So this is the part that actually comes off. So I think we'll leave it so it's serviceable. If we put it on this end here, we'll have trouble getting around the actual uh, forward nine inch rear there. So actually, let's go ahead and lube this up. It's, it's hard to get this sucker in here. And even with the clamp all the way open, it's a, it's a tight fit, it holds it. <laughs> it holds it. Out of the way. Out of sight, out of mind. And then the way that the body curves under, you won't actually see it underneath. But yeah, looks pretty good. So yeah, here's another shot here. And then you can see it actually clears the frame rail. So we still have plenty of room. I'd say a good, uh, maybe about three or four inches between that. Doesn't look like that, but we're using a wide angle lens. So it's pretty hard to tell the uh, scale of some stuff here. And then on the front, it clears the front end for the little swing arm as well. So we'll have about six inches here between the body and this rail, depending on how far we go back with the channeled body there. Wish we could have kind of put it over here, but with the battery box and all the electrical stuff going on, I think it'd be safer <laughs> the further away it is. But let's jump over to the back of the truck because something special came in. It's gonna make the T-bucket build a lot easier. And you guys guessed it, we have tires and rims finally came in. So take a look at that. Skinny fronts. Fat rears, Mickey Thompson slicks. The guy at the uh, tire shop was so excited when he installed these. Uh, he kept telling me how much it didn't take any weight to balance. Kind of scared me because I was like, did you even balance them? But um, they stamped them for the rotational difference, all that fun stuff. So I got one of the front skinny ones mounted. So let's take a peek at that. If you're thinking, no, I did not buy a Super Duty. I did not get rid of the Chevy. We would never get rid of the Chevy, but take a look at that there. You know, just as I ended the last video, our fancy, fancy lug nuts came in. So they're a little longer than, I don't know, that looks a little longer than about two inches there. These are pretty long. I probably should have went with something a little smaller, but it's got class, right? It's got class. Um, it came with a little adapter because uh, it is uh, safety lugs, but you can already tell that the covering on these lug nuts is actually pretty cheap. So I don't expect them to last very long at all. Now this here is like the crowning achievement of everything that we have done so far on this T-bucket. It feels good to finally put some real tires on here. And if they mount, all right, just maybe. We will roll this sucker out of the garage today, just to see what it looks like. Man, these better fit and be the right. Don't tell me they sent me the wrong ones. Are you serious? What? No way. No, oh, never mind. There's just a bunch of powder coats stuck on the inside of it. Yeah. Cheap. I wasn't gonna wait another couple days again. 
We getting these a set on here? Kind of a pain in the butt. And you really got to press these lugs on to actually get them started. There's so much powder coat baked into the thread. So she's on all fours and standing by herself. Take a look at that. I feel like this is like a big day right here. So I still have it on the wheel dollies for right now, uh, just so I can maneuver it around here. But let's take a peek at here. So there you go. There's the rear, take a look at that. And then from the back side, so we're gonna be pretty good on clearance. I did take all the measurements and stuff here. So the body's gonna sit right here and we're gonna have maybe I'd say about two, two and a half, three inches between the tire itself and uh, the body that's gonna sit here. And then same thing on this end. This is the battery box bracket here, but that body will sit right there. But damn, look at that. Doing pretty good with the rake. Not too much rake on the back. It's actually pretty even considering the size of the tire. So I think we did pretty good on the tire measurement as well as the offset. So for the rear, we did a 5.5 on the back spacing and then a 27 millimeter on the offset. So it's a bit of a shallower dish as you can see here, but this dish actually matches the dish up front. What I don't like is when you have a shallow dish up front and then the rear tire sits really deep because the rim is just so wide. So I wanted to bring that dish forward just a little bit. Really, really happy with the way this actually turned out. It's looking really, really good uh, I just looked on Marketplace too. A guy was selling a um, uh, valve covers, the black powder coated ones for GM. So we might end up picking those up and get rid of the orange ones that we have here. I do kind of want to go with a nice match here for the radiator, but let's jump. All up. right, so let's talk about this windshield here now that we have a actual roller. So we did get our windshield. We're going through a tribute style kind of cut, 39 and a half by, um, don't really remember. 19. And if you were following my Colorado trip to go pick up the Goblin in Texas, yeah, Colorado trip to Texas, we ended up swinging by the glass shop. So uh, yeah, let's go back in time and see how they cut this. Pretty cool, right? So I actually got pretty lucky learning that, uh, let's just say somebody in the family owns a glass shop. So hit them with some measurements. They told me they had some, uh, what's it called? Multiply laminate glass and they did a quick cut. So the way this one's actually gonna work out is we did get our brackets for the bucket itself. So it's gonna sit somewhat low. I wanted like a lower windshield. Didn't want anything that was too crazy. Um, not a fan of the grandpa windshield. No offense, just, just like it. Low profile, a little more modern. A little more ratty look. 
Um, depending on kind of how the wind hits us, because we got such a good deal on the glass, um, we could end up going larger or smaller. Haven't got any side posts yet, so we're just gonna start, whoa, I almost broke it. We're just gonna start with this for now, and then uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Well guys, that's all I got for you on the tea bucket. I kinda wanted to get to some stuff on the actual body itself, but the temperature is just still sitting in the low 60s, 65, so it's just not warm enough to really do anything here. I do have to say I'm really excited the way this actually turned out. Very, very happy now that we actually have a roller. Um, and the rim choice, I think, was... <laughs> pat myself on the back, I'd say that was a pretty good decision. Especially since it matches the seats that we have in the tea bucket itself there. So it'll be about 80, 85 this weekend. We're going to try to shoot the base coat, primer, clear coat, all that fun stuff on this. I'm going to do it all at once, knock it out. It shouldn't take too long. We're not really doing too much there. For the Duramax guys, I do have a special video coming for you, our Florida, Colorado, tea bucket Goblin pickup, all that stuff. So check out that for next weekend. That's going to be popping up there. But uh, in the meantime, we do have some stuff we got to do on the bucket. I know I've been dangling the carrot for the body, but we will get to the body. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them below, and I'll see you guys next time.